Here we go. We're live. Hi, everyone. It's Giovanna here, host of She Rises, coach, uh, relationship whisperer, and just your friend here to talk to you about a topic that's near and dear to my heart. So last Friday, I attempted to do this topic on Instagram Live, and unfortunately, the cyber gremlins uh, had their way with me, and I don't know what happened to it. It just disappeared. So I'm hoping that this is actually coming through, that the audio is coming through, that you can hear what I'm saying. Um, if not, there might be a take three. Anyway, I'm here coming at you with a topic that is all about self-love. We've all heard the expression that self-love is the key to finding a loving relationship. In fact, you have to love yourself first before anybody will love you. And I'm here today to tell you why that is bullshit. Now, you're probably going to say, Giovanna, what are you talking about? Of course, that's true. You have to love yourself before anybody else will love you. And there is a kernel of truth to that. So it's not that it's completely a lie, but it's mostly bullshit. And I'm here to tell you why. <laughs> so we're sold this concept. It's very, you know, it's very new agey. It's very personal development-y, right? Like you have to love yourself completely before anybody else will. And what I have found in my experience that there is one key thing that you need to do even over and above that and get this one perfect before you attempt to get loving yourself perfect. So here's what I see happening. This happened with myself. It happens with my clients. I see it happening with my friends is that we get onto this whole new age concept of you have to love yourself first before anybody will love you. And we really hook onto it. And it gets us on this track where we are trying to reach some level of completed, right, with this self-love thing. And so I see this all the time happening. This is what happened with me, right? It's like I kept working on myself and working on myself. And it's like, well, I was looking at, you know, what was happening in my love life and, you know, where I was at with my self-love and I was doing this whole, like, blaming myself. Well, I must be attracting this because I don't love myself enough here. And so I don't want to attract this anymore. So I'm going to totally, like, either shut it down, you know, block it out, or I'm going to, like, really dive into the personal development and try to get this self-love thing right. And I'm here to tell you that you can't get it right. There is no right to the self-love thing. There is no perfect place where once you reach this level, then you will attract the partner for you. And it's a really slippery slope because we mean well. We mean well when we tell people, well, you have to love yourself first before you can X, Y, Z, especially when it comes to a relationship, right? We tell ourselves that, hey, Kelly, Kelly, can you hear me okay? Is my audio okay? Because this is my take two of this. So I'm hoping that it's coming through loud and clear. Um, send me a message if you can hear me. Um, anyway, so yes, we have this concept that we throw around this, like you have to get the self-love thing right before you can get the relationship. And it gets us into this little bit of a spiral, especially if you're into personal development like I am and many of my clients and colleagues and friends are. And we get into this thing where we have to reach this level of where we have self-loved enough and then we can meet the partner of our dreams. And there is some truth to that, right? So obviously if we are, you know, drawing in abusive relationships, if we are really at that nth degree, then yes, there is a matter of loving yourself more that has to be worked on. However, what I have found is the one key thing over and above self-love that when you get this one piece, it will change everything for you in terms of attracting the partner that you want in your life. And that is value. So everything changed for me when I was able to see the value of what I brought into a relationship. When you can see your value, when you can understand, I have this to offer and this to offer, and these are my great traits, and this is what I bring. And hey, there might be this one thing that's not so great about me, but I'm X, Y, Z. I'm open enough to work on it. I'm this, I'm that. When you start to develop your own list of values, that is actually when everything will shift for you. And I mentioned for me, this is when everything shifted for me. And I'll tell you why focusing on the self-love thing is going to get you in this like spiral. Hey guys on Instagram, it's going to get you into this spiral of like having to be worked on yourself enough before you can find the guy or the girl. And it doesn't work that way because actually being in relationship, in a healthy relationship, helps you heal those pieces that you don't yet love 100%. I'm going to say that again. Being in a healthy relationship 
is what helps you to start to heal the unloved places. Yes, there are ways that you can continue doing this on your own. However, what I find is that some women get trapped in a spiral like I was where they have to get it right. And until they get it right, they can't get back out there. They can't get the love they want or they're in a relationship that's not fulfilling and they're blaming themselves, right? It must be because I don't love myself enough. It must be because I haven't done enough work on myself. And it doesn't work that way because when you're in the right relationship, when you're in the relationship that is healthy for you, and by healthy, I mean your partner makes you feel safe. They make you feel seen. They make you feel valued. That relationship will help you heal those pieces of yourself that aren't yet healed. And we leave this out. So um, there's a, there's this whole theory out there that's called attachment theory. Many of us have issues with attachment. They started very early on in infancy and some of us pre-verbal, so we don't even remember. So you could be sitting there saying, well, I don't think I have an attachment issue. If you're struggling in relationship, chances are there's attachment stuff going on. So here's the thing. You can only heal relationship trauma in a relationship. So if you have trauma from a past relationship, if you have attachment issues from when you were young, if you have any of this showing up for you, I'm here to tell you, you can't get that fixed and right and then start a relationship because that stuff is healed in a relationship. So your mission at this moment, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, and if you are craving a, a more fulfilling relationship, if you are craving um, even just connecting with someone, if you're out there dating, right? You're not in a relationship yet, but you're out there dating and you just keep coming up, up, up dud against dud against dud, right? You just keep finding all these duds out there. I'm here to tell you that if you start to look within, and we all know it starts within, right? We all know that we're the common denominator. But if you start to create your values list of really seeing what your values are, that slowly, slowly, things are going to change for you. And you might think this is a simple task. And I remember being told this so many times as I was doing this work in my years. And I was like, yeah, 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 that sounds like a great concept. But actually, again, everything changed for me when I got this one simple concept. So you guys have all made investments. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've made investments. If you're in your 40s like I am, you've made some big ones in your life, right? Homes and, you know, stuff like that. You, when you buy something, when you make an investment, you always want to consider what the value proposition is, right? So what can I potentially get, right, from this? Or what's the value, rather, not get from it, but what's the value in this particular thing I'm about to purchase, invest in? What is, it, what is the value? And it's that value proposition that we consider when we're about to buy something or invest in something that we actually have to start applying to ourselves. So I ask you, this is your little bit of homework. What is your value proposition? I literally want you to take out a pen and a piece of paper and I want you to write down everything that is valuable about you. Everything that you bring to a relationship to a friendship, to the world. And I mean everything. And here's the trick. If you have trouble doing this, that's okay. Call a friend. Call a best friend. Call someone who sees you. Maybe ask your family. If you're a professional out there and you work with clients intimately, ask your clients, what is it about me that makes me valuable? What is it? Because often we don't see it ourselves, right? We, we need to see it reflected to us. Once we see it reflected to us, then we're like, oh, okay, I get it. So create this value proposition for yourself. What is your value? What, have you, what do you have to bring to a relationship? Because I'll tell you what, I don't love myself fully. I'm still a work in progress. I am still working on myself. I still look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, my thighs, my ass, my stomach. I do all that. I don't love myself 100%. But I've attracted a beautiful, healthy relationship. So I think, hmm, what's wrong with this theory? I don't love myself fully. How come I have a beautiful, healthy, happy, fulfilling relationship with an amazing person? Because everything changed for me when I got this one thing, which is my value. I understood what it is that I bring to a relationship. And so there's no way I'm going to settle for someone who brings less than that. There's no way I'm going to settle for bringing all that value and not getting it in return. There's no way that that's going to happen because I understand 
my value. So that's why the self-love thing is a little bit, and maybe as my nephew used to say, a lot of bit, bullshit. Stop focusing on that to the detriment of going out there and getting what you need in love and finding what you need. Stop using the self-love thing as a way to beat yourself up. Like, oh, I don't have this yet. And so that means I must not love myself enough. And so we do that spiritual guilt thing, right? That new age guilt is what I call it, right? You use all these new age spiritual principles of development and you, we use them to bash ourselves, right? So I don't love myself enough. It must mean that because I don't have a relationship. But it's not about that, right? We can say value is in the umbrella of self-love, but I'll tell you what, if you keep focusing on getting to a level of self loveness right? Self-love enoughness, I should say, and then you'll attract the person and then you'll be in the healthy relationship and then things will work out. It doesn't work that way. I've learned from experience. When you get your value, when you understand your value above anything else, even if you don't love yourself 100%, you will be able to discern a better partner. You'll be able to stand up and have boundary in your own relationship of what you're willing to, you know, to give or not give or, or how far you're willing to go. You will attract someone. And I don't mean from a, you know, the secret sit on a lily pad and FedEx is going to show the man of your dreams at your door. I wish that was the case, but it doesn't happen that way, right? You will attract because you are putting out the vibration of I have value for myself and therefore I won't accept less than this. So that's why focusing on just self-love as a concept, it sounds really pretty, right? You're not going to, you're not going to have the person that you love until you love yourself. And you think, well, that's logical, of course, but you're never, ever going to get to a point of a hundred percent total self-love if you don't see the value. So see the value, the self-love comes. And it sounds like, well, Giovanna, you're saying the same thing. Like they're, they're kind of under the same umbrella, but there's a little nuance where it's, it is very different. And when you feel your value, which is more concrete, it's more tangible, you will love yourself more. You totally will love yourself more because you know your value. But this concept of you got to love yourself first before anyone will love you is a little bullshit. So question that. Look at other people out there who have healthy, happy, amazing relationships. Find an avatar for yourself. Find someone who has an amazing relationship with an amazing man or woman that you just think, wow, I, I just admire them so much. And find out if they love themselves 100%. Like if you ask them, do you 100% love yourself? Like everything about yourself. Do you love yourself? They're probably going to say no. They're going to say I'm a work in progress, right? We all, I mean, I can get into a whole spiritual discussion about the truth of who we are, right? And that we are love itself. And this is what we're remembering. But from the very human place in this 3D world, we are all working on loving ourselves more. And that's just the point. We're all working on it. So don't wait till you get to some level of I've self-loved enough until you get the relationship that you want. Start with your value and then your self-love will come. So make that list. See, if, you know, play along. See, do that homework. Create that value proposition for yourself. See if, um, or what rather, your value is. Write it down. And I would say read it every day until you can stand in the mirror and say, and not from a place of ego, but from a place of surety, until you can stand in the mirror and say, you would be so lucky to be in a relationship with me. You would be so lucky because I have all this to offer. So you're not interested? That's okay. Next right? Thank you. Next. That's when you know you got it, right? And again, you're not saying this in front of the mirror from a place of ego of like, oh, you know, my poop doesn't stink. You're saying it from a real place of acknowledging your value and your worth. And guess what? At that point, you may still not be able to say, I love myself hundred percent. That's okay. Don't wait. Now you know your value. Now you know what you're worth. Now you can have that difficult conversation. Now you can set that boundary. Now you can go on a date and know clearly you're a yes, you're a no, you're a yes, you're a no, right? That's when you know. So I'm just going to have a look at the comments and see. Uh, okay, Scott says, I'm in a cycle of self-improvement, trying to make others feel better about themselves as well. And notice not a damn thing changing externally in my life. Beyond frustrated and feeling more loneliness um, is just in the uh, feeling 
and feeling loneliness is just in the cards and the lesson is to accept and not fight it. Generally, even if I'm upbeat and friendly, people shy away from me. People say that maybe my energy is intimidating. So to, so to that, I ask, when will I meet people that I, that, can handle it versus scaring them away. Well, that's a really, so you said a lot there, Scott. So you definitely picked up on the whole spiral of self-improvement and trying to do all that stuff. Sometimes just even the trying to self-improve, the trying to love yourself more, the trying to all of that stuff is literally sending a message that you're, you really are not that enough, right? Like that you're, you're sent to yourself. You're sending a message that there's a gap here. I'm not enough. And I heard you say in there that, you know, you're learning to sort of accept where you're at. And I would, I would challenge you try and do this value proposition exercise for yourself, Scott, like really, really sit down and list out what it is that you bring to a friendship, to a relationship, to the world so that you could really own and see your value. Because I guarantee you, and I, I don't know the whole situation here, so it's hard to, ha to answer on Facebook, but I guarantee you that the people that are your people will be attracted to you. And they're not going to say, oh, you're intimidating they're going to get you. They're going to see you because you see yourself. The people that are not for you, it's okay. Let them go. They don't see you, right? So they're yours. So they'll label you as intimidating or they'll label you as something else. That's okay. They're just not your people. Doesn't make them bad. Doesn't make you bad. Doesn't make anyone bad. Like I, there's people in my life right now who I really admire, respect, and I just see what they're doing and it's amazing. But I, there is no resonance for us to hang out and be friends. Like there's just something there and that's okay. That doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make me wrong. It's just some people, it just, that's how it is. And then that's the cycle and maybe it'll change. So that's okay and be okay with that too. Um, but when you really get and see your value, you really actually don't even have to work on yourself anymore in that sense, right? So for all of you listening that are into working on yourself, um, that's great, right? Because we're in this world and personal uh, um, and spiritual development is my jam. Don't get me wrong. It's what I do. It's my bread and butter. I try and help people really get to the best of themselves. So there's nothing wrong with it. But I even say this to my clients. When I see them working too hard on working on themselves, you got to stop. You got to live your life. You got, you know what? The universe, when you're, when something is like, you're ready to deal with something, guess what? It's going to be in your face. The universe is going to present it to you. You have to look at it and say, oh, okay, hi, there you are. And I'm going to have to deal with you right? But when you are like in this cycle of trying to work on yourself and you're reading all the self-help books, right? And you're doing all the stuff and you're doing all the workshops, that's all fine and dandy, but that could also become addictive. That be can become even a barrier to your improvement. So I would say, Scott, if you're still listening, try that values proposition, really get and read it to yourself every day. Read it to yourself in the morning, read it to yourself at night, really till you get to that point where you absolutely see your value because when you sit in that really really comfortable grounded energy of i know myself like this is what i have to bring this is what i have to offer you won't be intimidating to other people people will be drawn to you and again the people that aren't they're just not your people so i hope that's helpful i know it's hard on facebook without knowing your whole history of what's going on but i hope that's helpful to you i'm just going to check instagram quickly guys where am i at here all right no comments there lots of people watching hey guys um so that's it for today guys if this this was at all helpful for you um, please share this with a friend. It really just helps me continue my work and do more of this work with people. One of my passions in life is helping people who were where I was at with the whole relationship thing and the self-love thing really just turn their whole life around. When I see men and women really not valuing and honoring themselves and settling for bad behavior or bad relationships or even just in a relationship with an amazing person, but they're just like it's not happening because there's uh, an internal uh, struggle. There's wounds coming up from the past. It really, really brings me so much joy to help that person and that couple really. So if this resonated with you, if you know someone that this is stuck in this, like I got to get this self-love thing right. I got to get this right. And if I don't get it right, then I'm not going to have the person send this to them. Maybe this will help them. And if you are someone who is ready to take this work to the next level, right? You're, you're tired of the self-help spiral. You want to get real answers. You want to actually understand the science behind 
why it is that you're doing what you're doing and the science behind why it is that you are how you are and how you can heal that and how you can improve it and how you could have the relationship that fulfills you, then I invite you to join me. I am starting a program. It starts at the end of October. Actually, we're extending the date to beginning of November. It is called Love Sick to Love Healed. It is an eight-week program that I will be hosting every single week on two-hour calls. You will be in a very exclusive uh, curated group of 10 to 12 women. And this is, a, this is a for women only. So for those of you men watching, uh, I will definitely create something for you in the future. But right now, this is a women only one. Um, and there'll be, like I said, 10 to 12 women, highly curated group where I will be coaching you every single week. We'll be on a 90-minute to two-hour call. Lots of juice and lots of transformation, guys. So if you're ready to take this next step, if you're ready to take it to the next level, I want to invite you to go to my website, javanacaposa.com. And in particular, the link that is under work with me, I will put it in the uh, comment thread below so you'll be able to find it and you can apply. It is by application only. Again, I'm, it's a highly curated program. I'm interviewing each person that joins the program so you can be guaranteed you're with other women who are like-minded and who are at that level of doing this work and, and being really committed. So go to javanacaposa.com or click on the link I'm going to put at the end of this live. And again, share this with someone if you think that it would serve them. It is my absolute joy and pleasure to help people along their spiritual journey, but in particular around their spiritual journey through uh, relationships. It is my absolute joy to do that. So thanks guys for listening. And uh, my intent is to be here every Monday at one o'clock or sooner. Uh, I will try and post uh, before. So give you a little bit of warning of when I'm going on. Hope this was helpful and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.